Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wish you a very happy, very special, very cryptocurrency Friday over here from a very cold Helsinki, Finland. Just finished my pound of ground beef to start the morning. So let's get into some magical internet money. But as always, want to be wishing you well, want to be wishing you the happiest of the happiest Fridays out there possible. Of course, always want to be wishing you the best. But let's get into the live stream right now because that <laughs> is what needs to be talked about. And as you can see, Bitcoin is still fucking around in this uh, 30, 3850, 38, uh, not, uh, th sorry, 3900 range. Uh, we do have a rejection coming in and the very early Early morning hours. I was just waking up as Bitcoin ticked all the way up above 3,900, and so far I actually do consider this a front run of the 89 exponential as it is situated. And really, to get the best idea of what's going on, we need to go down to the lower time frames. But while we're on here on the higher time frames, I do want to say that it is still the same overall picture from the medium time frame perspective. Whichever one happens first, whether Bitcoin takes out that 89 exponential to the upside or the 21 exponential to the downside, which are they're slowly getting sandwiched between each other now. Um, but whichever one happens first, that will be the next medium term direction for Bitcoin. If Bitcoin takes out 3940 to the upside, and that's actually a little bit below 3940 now. Um, then I would be looking for a move to about 4,200 and probably beyond um, over some time. And then, of course, if Bitcoin were to take out the 21 exponential to the downside at 37, it's almost it's about 37.90. So they've actually shifted about 10 bucks each in in both directions. And uh, if, it, if it were to take out that area, I would be looking for a move very quickly down to about 36.50 and probably you know overall to the lows of the range. So that's what's at stake right now, and that's why this area is so fucking important. Now we do have our daily Stokes bringing up our uh, bringing up our also. We do have our daily stokes really hinting at across the upside. They will cross the upside if Bitcoin closes today out above anywhere above 3880. It should cross the upside and should be confirmed. Uh, it's been snaking around the whole last week, actually going all the way back to the start of um, of March. So again, looking at something like this, uh, this is you know it's going to have fall through. It's going to be a secondary type confirmation, of course. But price action will come first and is going to tell you first and foremost. In fact, I would say that I would even go as far to say that I don't need to see a daily to look close above 3940 or 3930 i need to see like a two hour deal to close above there that would be good enough for me that would be plenty and uh, and i think that that would you know certainly lead on to the daily and have follow through with all the other higher time frames but for now uh, this area of great importance. So we're going to go down to lower time frames and kind of document uh, what's been going on over here. Four hour it does have a massive wick on it with uh, 10 minutes and 29 seconds left to go. I'm going to put on my drawing tools and it's wicking up as you can see in the same area that we've had marked off for the last um, what is this about two and a half weeks all the way going back to uh, late February. Anyways, uh, the relevancy of this is is that this blue box is the resistance so to speak. It is not just coming in from these lower time frames going all the way back from um, you know, uh, middle of February to actually also in uh, January as well. But uh, but also it's gonna be it's gonna be coinciding with a lot of higher time frames as well, which we'll get into in a little bit. But for now, I do want to stay here. And as long as Bitcoin is in this sort of posturing, there are a lot of things to be aware of. As we do have a four hour uh, Stokes taken down right now. They did uh, they did confirm across uh, late last night. It looked like. And while the four hour uh, RSI is presenting some bearish divergence. As long as it's kind of consolidating in this range, I would be, I, I again, I would be putting first and foremost um, respect on the price action. You got to respect that price action. Give her a nice sweet talk, tuck her in at night, and uh, tell her she's lovely until she butt fucks you. But if that doesn't happen, well, <laughs> you can be respectful of her. Anyways, in the very low time frame, it's the hourly right here. You actually do see a rising channel forming right now. Something like this. Uh, we did catch our last wick on the top of the channel. Typically a bearish pattern, a bearishly resolved pattern. Um, as you can see, we do have plenty of divergences going all the way through on this guy. Or sorry, girl. I don't want to assume any sort of uh, gender stereotypes here. But if this 38, uh, more importantly, if this 3850 support, this rising trend line support that we uh, that we looked at, that we formed last night, um, is broken, then yes, I would be looking for a quick move down to about 3815. But remember, this is not the critical area for downside. As far as I'm concerned, I would only be bearish in the medium term if 3780, um, 3790 broke right around here, basically 3800. It's close enough, right? Um, so again, that is the importance of this area. However, at this 3900 area, and I'm just going to colloquially refer to it as 39, but understand that it is, it's the it's the area encompassing between about actually 3880 um, and 3930. Uh, that area is a massive, massive resistance area because not only does it encompass this blue box territory, which we have gotten all these wicks into right now, and as of right now, you know, it still holds, um, but it's also going to be coinciding with the monthly 
Sorry, let's get the monthly over here. The monthly 50 exponential, which Bitcoin broke for the first time in its history in Jan sorry in December, not January, in December. Um, and we've been living below it ever since, ever, ever since December closed. So that 50 exponential is coming in right around where? Right around 3880, essentially, a little bit above 3880. So again, a lot of things coinciding on this area. And while this while this price action is consulting in this in, in this zone at uh, around 3900, I do want to be cognizant of the lower time frames most importantly the three day which is very obviously uh, uh, is, is very obviously very constructive price action coupled with a nice falling off of volume signature telling me that this is consolidation right here. So if this can be verified of cons as, as consolidation on a time frame like this, it should be able to confirm it on the monthly, which I would agree this is consolidation below the 50 exponential as these two moving averages approach each other right here, the 10 simple and the yellow 21 exponential. And as those guys get ever so close and kiss, and they are kissing right now, as you can see, uh, that is going to be the impetus if they actually do confirm across the downside for what would likely force this consolidation, if this is to be con considered a, a consolidation, which I do believe it is at the current moment in time, um, that would be the impetus for this guy breaking to the downside. So again, markets don't happen in one day. Markets don't, definitely don't happen in one hour. Markets don't even happen in one week. But when we look at the monthly right here, you can see very, 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 very clearly that a lot's at stake in this area. And with this month being extremely fresh, I really have to, I'd really like to, you know, if the bulls are going to take over, this area needs to be taken out relatively soon. And when I say relatively soon, I mean, before the weekend ends, there will be a point in time where the welcome is worn out at a major resistance like this, when looking at a higher time frame like this, not only that, but you know, all all monthly um, oscillators are still bearish, we got our monthly uh, RSI, uh, fucking around in the bearish control zone. Uh, still staying above it, though, uh, to be fair. Uh, although, by the way, we actually did get to the lowest RSI ever on the monthly in Bitcoin's history uh, a couple months ago. Uh, monthly Stokes still coming down. But remember, just because, the, just because the Stokes are in the oversold bro territory doesn't mean that it can't go lower. It can certainly go lower. Just like over here, Bitcoin stayed overbought, bro, for about a year. For about a year, all the way from um, January of 2017 to February of 2018. Um so again, it can, it can certainly stay down here for quite some time. Although, typically speaking, the bear cycles will last shorter than the bull cycles, and we already have been in here for uh, since December. So it's it, you know it's been a couple it's been a few months. Anyways, uh, on to our next time frame to kind of show more confluences with this area. But we have the two week diddle time frame right here, which is very important to me because this red ten simple moon average has been governing price action all of the major highs for the last over a year, going all the way back to middle of January of 2018. Why is this important? Well, as long as Bitcoin is both opening and closing we, uh, two weekly doles below this red 10 simple moon average, I do see that as the preliminary resistance. And uh, and where are we right now? We're brushing up right against it. And where is it officially at? 3,900 essentially. So just another higher time frame coming in right around there. And look at this. We do have a very nasty exponential moving average across the uh, the yellow 21 and the green 50, crossing the downside right here. And as Bitcoin is below all major moving averages, I would look for this to be a signal at, uh, for this overall consolidation to likely be to, to likely be, res bleh, be resolved in that same direction. Now, of course, that comes with the caveat that we have to maintain below that 10 simple moving average, which we quite literally were just actually above it um, about an hour or two hours ago. Um, but hey, you can see that the sell pressure is right around that right around that area. So what am I saying? Am I saying that Bitcoin can't get above 3,900? No, of course not. Long term, I'm a believer in Bitcoin. I don't believe that Bitcoin's like never going to see above 3,900 again. I think it could actually get some of those crazier numbers that you might hear. Maybe not like the not like the John McAfee numbers, but but, you know, a six digit type shit. Uh, but years and years, and years down the road. Anyways, um. As long as we're below this, though, I do I am respectful of it. The trend is your friend until the end of the trend, and the trend has been down. And this the trend has been sell on the red ten simple moon average for the last year. Again, does that mean that it'll never break out of there? No, but until proven otherwise, I run with that assumption. You can see that it is quite literally right here with a very nasty exponential moving average cross as the monthly is slowly taking its way towards there. Of course, the two weeks is gonna, you know, it's gonna be faster than the monthly. But to me, this is very, 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 very revealing. Especially as long as we are below um, I mean, if, if we were to break above the 10 simple moving average, I would be looking for a move to the to the 89 right here, which again is gonna be 4,400. So that kind of align with the lower four thousands. Again, 
line. I'm not, I'm agnostic in this range. If I had to pick a direction, I'm gonna go with down because it's a bear market, of course. And if I were trading this right now, which I actually am on my, my, on my main account, I did take a short at 3,900 on my main account. Um, but uh, hey, if that area gets taken out, it's certainly worthwhile to consider along as far as I'm concerned. Um, <clears throat> so again, looking at these, looking at the higher delta timeframes, that is where this becomes a lot more, um, a lot more visually apparent as far as, uh, as, as far as I can see. Um, I'm curious what the two week RSI looks like. Yep. Just coming back and testing the exponential, by the way, we've been living below the exponential since December of 2017, each and every test has, or sorry, we've, we've actually only tested it once on the two week delta timeframe right here. That was July of 2018. That was on this massive bull trap where you actually do see Bitcoin closed a two-week dildo above it, but we never both opened and closed above it. So very, 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 very important contingency right there, um, as that is what constitutes a broken uh, confirmed kill of a moving average. As you can see, very obviously sell, you know, it's very obviously a trap. Anyways, um, that is that is why I'm looking at these time frames. We do have our three-day stokes also hinting at across to the downside. They are crossing to the downside in the bear, or sorry, rejecting the bullish control zone. Now this is not confirmed yet. We're gonna need one more tick on this guy. And we did just get this last tick, you know, with last night's new uh, three-day dildo. So it's gonna take some time. It won't be until uh, Sunday, I believe. Um, but again, if this area is to, is to reject right here, I mean, this has been, <laughs> The uh, the the crosses down on the three day stokes have actually been pretty damn good at getting overall price action. This 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 cross down right here was your January highs uh, when price action was coming down right there. Uh, the cross before that was this massive uh, drop down from the eighty four hundred region. The cross before that was right here on the on the uh, drop down from ten thousand to six thousand, and the cross before that was this twelve thousand area going all the way down to six thousand as well. So. If we're, you know, again, the, the, the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. And so far, that has been the word, the, the word of bear Jesus. So looking at that, yes, I would go with that until told otherwise. However, when the three-day dildo is above the 21 exponential, I do have a very difficult time being bearish. To be quite honest, I have a very difficult time being bearish as long as we're above there. Um, yes, we did get a fake out before, but uh, two fake outs uh less likely a lot less likely so what i could say is that the lower time frames are i would be more bullish on at the higher time frames i'd be more bearish on let's go look at the four day as well four day is important to me here because the four day is getting right around its major resistance areas too we see the four day little death cross with a 50 below the uh, 200 we see uh we see all uh price action below all major moving averages or sorry not below all major moving averages but below the 21 which is most important to me whenever we have a death cross as long as you're below the 21 it is pressure on as far as i'm concerned and you do see that uh, we had a clear rejection at the 21 when we had a chance to close above it um what was that like two three weeks ago you know basically that run to 4200 with ending with a clear rejection you also see this blue 377 exponential coming in right around this range which has been governing all of the highs since bitcoin essentially putting this bounce from um uh what is it uh, early december so again a lot of things coming around this area a lot of things coming around this area and it, and it is with no you know it, it is with no small resolve that i take this uh, especially on the higher time frames uh, we have four hour stokes still headed up so i would imagine Fair enough. I mean, that that would be more bullish thing. I mean, overall, this this isn't the worst setup of all time. We are we are very clearly catching the 10 simple to the downside. But with selling pressure right here, that range is the range to be until told otherwise. And actually, the 10 simple is coming in all the way at, uh, all the way at 3700. If we do come back down to the 10 simple, though, it, it very will likely break. Um, just like if we were to come back up and test 39, uh, what is this area, uh, any, anywhere above 3,900 again, it's probably going to break. I, I do, I really do think that the next move probably breaks this guy. Um, <clears throat> so again, looking at something like that, uh, that's what I'd be thinking right there. So that's all the higher time frames kind of agreeing with each other, saying that there is major, major, major resistance in this area, which would actually really coincide with a massive change in behavior on the medium time frame direction. If we break up to the upside, again, I would be looking for a quick move into the low 4,000s, uh, 4, probably 4,200, you know, probably stop there for a little bit and then continue onwards and upwards above there. Um, 
And then, if, and then if we break uh, below 37, um, I believe it was 37.80, 37.90, then I'd be looking for a move essentially down to the low side of the range, you know, whether it's 3,400 or, or 3,300, whatever it is, um, not too concerned about that, but it's uh, over time. It's not going to happen, you know, at the snap of a finger, but but that kind of be the general destination as Bitcoin still seems to be pretty comfortable living below this, um, below this resistance trend line. So, 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 so let's go back on to BitMexico and let's go back on to the lower time frame see if we can find any more hints in this guy uh two hour digits officially close as a massive massive shooting star dildo at the top of this rally we do have two hour stokes confirmed down now uh, i believe hourly are confirmed or snaking snaking down right now they want to cross down what about three hour three did not close but it is uh it wants to come down as well it looks like we'll be closing the next 57 minutes and 48 seconds and uh four hour closing i mean it, it was it was never going to close up but uh yeah again you know long wick on this guy so that's what I see for Bitcoin right here. Lower time frames again, very simple. Uh, support 3850 resistance would be the would be the main big resistance at 3900 to 39. If you want to be very conservative, I'd say 3940 would be the area to be looking for. Um, just basically using the daily 89. So if we do break onto the downside, I would be looking for a quick move, basically to test uh, you know 3820 something like that. Uh, by the same token, you know if you break onto the upside, that's that's a different ball game. Remember though, for the downside, medium term uh, trigger is 3780. Um, 3780. So again, that's what I'd be looking at right there. Um, let's go check out the other uh, top shit coins. At, or sorry, let's actually go through. Um, let's actually also go through CMEs because there's there's not just all of the things that we looked at on spot charts for resistance in this area, but also CMEs. Look at this trend line going all the way back to uh, late November of 2018. This trend line has been governing the highs on CMEs, which I do believe have a better read on the charts. I do believe that CMEs uh, get get the price action better. Um, and that's been governing all of the last highs. And look at this. Where have we come and found resistance right at? 3,900, where, exactly where this guy comes in around. Also around uh, essentially the 382 Fibonacci retracement. I forgot to mention that on Bitcoin, we are essentially at the 236 Fibonacci, retra Fibonacci retracement. So again, just more and more things piling up in this area. But that also means that if we do break out of this area, something new is going on. Something new is going on. Um, if that were to happen, uh, daily stokes in the sky actually did cross up and they rejected getting out of the bullish control zone. So that would actually be interpreted as pretty fucking good. At, um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, let's see. What about the uh, four hour? Um, four hour looks like a little bit of selling obvious resistance. Uh, again, same area. Uh, four hour three, seven, seven, getting all the tops perfectly, by the way, again, ancient technology from the uh, traditional markets and four hour bearish divergence all along the way as well. Actually, three stabs. Uh, and four hour stokes down as well. Uh, four hour jewel, mm, I wouldn't really call that a signal. Not quite there. Not quite there. But again, just everything coming in around this area. Now, the good thing about CMEs is that they actually are above all of the uh, the 10 simple, 21 exponential, and 50, uh, 50 exponential. And technically the 3A2. But with this area kind of looking like the initial etchings of a... Um, of, of 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 a what I want to call this a re, of a rejection, not a trap, but a rejection. I would be careful here again until told otherwise, and I would really like to see um, CMEs close well above. Uh, I'd like to see like a two hour or like at least an hourly dollar closing well above thirty nine hundred, like thirty nine twenty would be good. You do also do see if we go down to the lower time frames that whether you look at this on the daily or the uh, or the hourly, the gap has been filled. Uh, going all the way back from um, late February. So again, a lot of the times there will be initial uh, selling reaction based off that. As you can see right here, uh, looks like we already got that. Actually, this the run from earlier this morning did not get as high as that one. That is very strange. That's actually very strange because the run during this morning actually got higher on all spot exchanges than, um, than this run right here, which was uh, yesterday. Or was it yesterday? No, it was very early morning hours. But again, uh, coming into this area, finding you know, finding resistance, find some sellers, and initially selling down. Not a death sentence, but um, kind of expected as a first pass. Now the game begins. Uh, so no matter which way you interpret this, whether it's on a daily or an hourly, uh, this guy has been filled. Alrighty, so let's go now over to the other top shit coins, uh, Mrs. Litecoin, who's been leading the market. Uh, very powerful, Mrs. Litecoin. Except, you know, obviously BNB is doing its own thing as well. In fact, I really should start covering BNB just because it, you know, it actually moves and it does something completely different, um, regardless of my thoughts uh, on it fundamentally. Um, 
But Mrs. Litecoin, again, looking at uh, looking at this rising resistance trend line, forming this ascending broadening wedge, still finding resistance along this area. Lower time frames look like they want to come down. Hour, four hour is a rejection, any below the 10 simple, below this horizontal re, uh, resistance right here. And uh, $56 is the area to beat as far as I'm concerned. We do have our four hour RS, or sorry, four hour Stokes coming down. We do have a four hour RSI uh, coming down as well, losing the ex, uh, getting, uh, training below the exponential and printing divergences all along the way. I think even divergence on the daily too um, however the thing is with divergence on the daily it's we can't really say that just yet it, there, there's an obviously there's there's obviously a trend line forming right here uh, technically speaking I'd want to see this confirmed as a lower uh, sorry as a local high first obviously not a lower high it's a higher high um, so if you know if today's daily confirms this is as, as a local high then yes then I'd be looking for the divergence boss start playing this guy out uh, daily jewel actually this this is either going to be a phenomenal signal right here or we're going to blow right past. So we actually really need to see the next tick on the daily jewel. And I'm in no rush to take a signal on a daily just because the daily signals are so fucking powerful with the jewel. Um, but if we see this light blue start to turn around and curl around while using these guys as, uh, as resistance, that will be a signal. And this would be one of the best signals that I've seen in... Yeah, in the last year, the last time that we had a really good signal was right here for a short side. Last uh, really good long signal was right here, uh, December 17th. So these areas uh, really come in in confluence with each other. Um, obviously, this one a little bit better because it's just higher in general. But uh, if we do see this guy turn around, that will be a sell signal. It's not set in stone just yet. It needs needs one more daily dildo. But again, looking at this as an ascending brawny wedge and looking at the volume signature, that does tell me that this is you know likely to play as one as well. Uh, 12 hour. Do we have anything on the 12 hour? 12 hour seem. 12 hour is definitely printing bearish divergence all the way through. One, two, three. Uh, usually three strikes throughout. Uh, 12 hour Stokes getting way up there. But that's fine. I, I I don't mind them being up there. I want to see them turn. That's when an actual signal is given. Uh, and do we have this confirmed as a local high? We mm, we actually do have continuation. So perhaps but I, we need to see this on a lower time frame. Perhaps uh, six hour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. So yeah, I would say that that, bear, that, that bearish divergence is likely to play out. Um, I'd be looking for a move, you know, if that's going to be the right way to play it, I'd be looking for a move to about $52.50. So again, you know, same sort of thing here. As long as Mrs. Litecoin is below this rising resistance trend line, that is the area to beat. That is the area to beat as far as I'm concerned. If Mrs. Litecoin takes it out to the upside, we have something completely new going on. I would not want to be bearish at all whatsoever on Mrs. Litecoin. Um... I mean, even even just closing above this guy right here is a pretty big deal. I mean, I, I could I could just as easily offer up the counterpoint. Uh, Mrs. Litecoin took out this last swing high, I believe. Uh, where did she close yesterday? Uh, closed 56 and a half. Where did we? Uh, ooh, right there. Okay, so it's it's pretty much right on the fucking dot, right on the fucking dot. Um, very 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 close. A little bit too close to call for myself. So I don't really have anything else to say on it. Um, I would say that if I had to pick a direction right now, I would be looking for a pullback to about fifty-two and a half dollars, um, and I'd be using this guy as my resistance trend line to manage uh, trades off of. But hey, if we close if we close above this resistance trend line, which again is rising, so yesterday was about fifty-eight dollars. Now it's coming in at uh, fifty-nine. So it is, you know it is rising over time. Um, then we're gonna have something new going on, and I'd be looking for a move probably to about sixty nine dollars, like quite literally sixty nine dollars. <laughs> I'm not not joking with that one, but actually like the number sixty nine. Um, let's go check out Mr. Buterall. How's he doing? Uh, Mr. Buterall looking like he's kind of curling down as well. Um, again, you know, six hour Stokes are turning around, four hour Stokes are definitely down, and uh, Mr. Buterall looking like the weakest of the top three. Uh, yeah, just you know, the same sort of area for Mr. Bitcoin is uh, is this one forty three and a half area for Mr. Buterall. As long as you're below there, I would be very careful with this price action. Uh, we did, you know, we obviously did lose the uh, the ten simple um, to the downside on the last tick. But hey, if this guy closes above one forty three and a half, it's the same thing as Bitcoin getting above that critical area that we spoke about as well. And I'd be looking for a very quick move to at the very least 152 and then probably 160 165 ish area just around the former high um, but for now you know it does feel like there's a little bit of pressure down i do want to check out the daily yeah daily's looking a little bit it's not certainly not looking as good as the other ones do we have uh do we take out the low of yesterday no we did not um, if we could take out the low of yesterday that would be a little bit more uh, encouraging for the bears but the critical area
area for the bears to break as far as Mr. Buterall goes is actually right here, right around the 382 Fibonacci retracement, which is also the 21 exponential. So I love that these guys are lining up with each other. I even love how they're co like color coordinated. <laughs> now you guys can see. Um, but uh, that's uh, where it's at, about 137 and a half. If, if we break that on a higher level deal to time frame, that will be a big deal. And I would be looking for a move, you know, very quickly, probably to this prior low at 128. Um, but overall, I'd be looking for a retest uh, around this area, which actually is not too far off now, but around the 618, you know, any, anywhere around 120, give or take a few bucks would kind of make sense. Um, so again, you know, a lot of trade ideas really emerging from this area. Like I said, if I had to take a trade right now, which I actually did, I took a trade at uh, 39, I, I think, I, I think I got in position at 3980 or 3990. Um, I don't really have anything going on in my streamer account right now. However, as this was like, I woke up and the move was just coming back to an end. So I'm like, all right, well, you know, if, if we're going to reject from right here, might as well, might as well uh, take a trade. Uh, does it end up being a scalp or an actual directional trade? That's a real question, but I will leave this one up for, um, I, you know, be, because this one got so deep on that last test, I will leave it up for, uh, you know, a potential directional trade. Anyways, um, yeah, that's what we see from Mr. Buterall right here. Uh, again, a lot of wicks in this area, a lot of fucking wicks. Let's go check out, uh, we forgot to look at GBDC. GBDC closed the day out pretty good yesterday on the daily, but if you go down to the hourly, you do see that the, that, that the hourly closes a rejection. Again, a gap fill going all the way back to uh, late February 22nd. Uh, stab one, stab two, down. And we do have our hourly stokes actually ca uh, coming down as well. I think four hour stokes are still going up and daily are probably up as well. Yeah, daily actually did confirm an up, uh, an up cross as well. So I would say that the higher time frames are actually looking better than the lower time frames, kind of opposite of um, of, uh, of spot right now. So yeah, looking at something like that, um, you know, I, I would be thinking up here as far as the higher time frames go. Lower time frames, though, looks like they like look like they do want to come down. But I wouldn't be bearish on this guy unless if he actually broke 460. And even then, it wouldn't be like full bear ahead. It would I would only be full bear ahead on GBTC if we actually broke about 420 to the downside. Great number, but very far away. So as you can see, bulls have a have a massive buffer zone here. Um, Alrighty, so let's go on. Uh, we've checked out uh, Buterall. We've checked out Mrs. Litecoin. Let's go check out traditional markets. Traditional markets uh, coming all the way down to the area that we spoke about for the last week, uh, 20, uh, 275, and bouncing off there. That's 200 simple, but did break the 21 exponential. So what I would be looking for for in, in the coming day, I guess, well, today, Friday, <laughs> as they don't trade on the weekends, is I'd actually be looking for a retest of the 21 around 275 and, uh, and three quarters, somewhere around there. And um, and I'd actually try a trade there. I'd actually try a trade there, uh, depending upon how we how we open the day. If we open the day up like a massive gap up, then I would not take that trade there. I'd be looking for about 279 and a quarter to take a trade on. Uh, but for now, you know, a lot of things still signaling actually that this wants to continue downwards. Uh, sold off in the late hours of the day, I believe. Yeah, uh, last, you know, well, actually, last hour is kind of a little bit of a rally. But again, any non as slows is never a good thing. You do see a lot of supports coming in this area, so I would be looking for a move um, back up. Uh, technically, you're uh, actually, you know, looking at the lower time frames, there's a much more obvious resistance right here at around two, 277, a little bit below 277. So perhaps I might be a little bit too aggressive with my 275 and, and three quarters uh, area. Again, it's not financial advisor, it's not a financial advisor, but uh, anywhere in this area between about 277 and, and about 276, we'll call it close enough is kind of where I'd be looking for trades upon. I mean, it just makes it a lot easier to, to, uh, to manage it. Um, and that, and this trade idea would be confirmed if we actually break 274 and a half to the downside. And I'd be looking for a move to about 271 and a half, 272 right around here, this next sort of, uh, horizontal support. Um, am I full on bear on this guy just yet? No, I'm not. I, I mean like reversal to like new lows. No, I'm not. It, it, unless if spies break about 264 and a half, I don't really have that in my, in my mind's eye. I'm just kind of looking for a pullback. It does look to me like it, like overall it wants to pull back to, at, at the very least to about 272, 271 and a half. That's just my personal opinion. Um, and then I want to see the reaction off there. If the reaction is lackluster, then yes, we, we, we very likely will come down to 264 and a half and test that area. However, remember just because it comes down there does not necessarily necessarily make me extremely bearish on that it would all I'd only be bearish for like a macro trend breakdown if we broke this area to the downside but for now you know this this two this 281 area has been the highs for the last uh actually almost uh what is it like four or five six months uh, going all the way back to october of last year one two three four five five strikes you're out in the old ball game and uh down 
Um, I, I believe that the weekly also has some major supports coming around uh, that two, yeah, 271-ish area, 272, right around here. So again, if it does come down there today, I would certainly be looking for, I'd, I'd certainly be looking to close positions. I would not be holding it through there um, just yet. Of course, with, with, with weekend action coming up as well, I, I really, when I traded traditional markets, I hated hated having positions over the weekend it was just like you can't fucking sleep so that's just my general disposition understand that i mean it's you know it might be different than yours some people might be okay with that but for myself i'm always happy to close positions and like i said yesterday i would have been closing at the very least some at the 200 simple at uh, 275 or a little bit below 275 so yeah I, I do think it comes down further though um but that you know it takes time right it's 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 a long game it moves out of snail's pace compared to bitcoin by the way i should also announce for 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 for, uh, for fairness if i can get my words out properly i need coffee again it's what i really need in my life so i can get out uh, i can speak properly um but i have put on all my all my programs on sale i'll make the official announcement on monday but i suppose because a lot of people have been asking i've been giving uh, i've been telling people so it's it's only fair that i give out the full-on message on a, on a stream like this and the code is year y-e-a-r all capitals 20 with the numbers two zero so it's all capitals year and then the numbers two zero uh, for 20 percent off on any one of the payment plans on any of my programs but i always want to down talk my programs please 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 heavily consider reasons why you should not take the programs before taking them because these are designed for very die hard type people who want to become a trader do this as a living, as a profession. Of course, not everyone who takes the program is is a professional trader. Some people, you know, ju just want to learn a little bit, which is all good. I'm not here to be the arbiter of that, but for the but but for everyone who does join, they are they are rather serious. So you will also be joining the Discord community if you do decide to invest, which is why I want to get this message out there because it's more important to me. As you know, as again, I don't make my money from selling these programs. I make my I make my money from actually trading. It's more important to me to actually you know, harvest the right type of group so that we all are coming from the same sort of mind frame, not necessarily, um, you know, we don't, I mean, like it's, it's just kind of, it's, it's going to cause dissonance if someone's there and like fucking around and, and that kind of shit. Um, so again, if you are interested in that, the links are description and that is the code Y E A R 20 in all capitals. And there you go. I'll make the official announcement uh, next week on the actual anniversary, but I figure in all fairness, I might as well just tell everyone now. Okay. So, uh, we spoke about that. Um, we spoke about traditional markets. Let's go check out the other top shit coins. Uh, what do we got? Zcash. And again, looking very, I mean, this, this is the problem right now is that we can do all the analysis on Bitcoin, Buterol, Litecoin, and their various degrees of, 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 of neutral and bullish. I mean, I would say that I'd say that Bitcoin rather neutral to slightly bullish. Litecoin is the closest one to being bullish. Buterol is neutral to slightly bearish, I'd say. So we have a nice little, you know, spectrum going on right there. But when we look at the other top shit coins, I think it's very quickly revealed what the overall feeling of the market is. This is Zcash right here, which, you know, again, disregard this wick, the wick from fucking hell. Uh, it's in a descending triangle, which is typically a bearish, uh, bearishly resolved pattern. Uh, looking at the oscillators right here, we do see a clear rejection on the um, on the exponential on the daily RSI. We do see our daily stokes uh, getting up there once again, but they are going to be testing the, the edge of the bullish control zone. So with price action going sideways to i mean technically it's down right now we put in about three doji dollars in a row which typically it's called three black crows typically is a uh, a bearish reversal pattern um that's not a good sign that's really not a good sign in fact that actually reminds me of, about something that i wanted to say on bitcoin with the uh, weekly rsi but with this guy right here you know you do see pressure mounting uh bcash bcash is also in a descending triangle as well uh, lost all major moving averages with uh, with today's daily dildo. Again, one, two, three, you know, kind of uh, small body dildos, typically signal of uh, a sign of indecision. And when you have too much indecision and overall downtrend, the former trend takes over. Uh, so same thing right here, but technically you are on support right around uh, 128. Um, let's go over to Tron Cash. What's Tron Cash doing? Tron Cash, again, this is exactly what we were looking for. Broke this guy to the downside. Well, we were bearish off this off this rejection off the 200 exponential right here, but broke it officially to the downside right here. Tested the 200 simple, popped back up, tested the breakdown trend line, and reject right off of it below all below all these moving averages now. Uh, Neocash, what's Neocash doing? Uh, Neocash giving you know gi uh, giving another test to this horizontal at uh, 930. 
but so far rejecting along with the rest of the market. Um, however, it does look a little bit different right now, but when we go down to a lower time frame, you can see the same sort of rejection going on. Could be a Quasimodo in the making as well. Uh, EOS Cash, what's he doing? EOS Cash was one of the more stronger responders uh, as of recent times. And what do we have on this guy? I mean, still in the overall context of a rising channel bear flag, uh, still using the, two, I mean, the 200 simple is, is the big resistance right here. That's about $4 even. So as long as you're below $4 even, uh, I, I wouldn't really be considering anything bullish, especially on a daily if, if you're if you're still below that. Um, let's go check out Ripple Cash, how we do Mr. Ripple's nipples. And again, still in the context of a descending triangle. And what did we see yesterday? We saw a test of the descending triangle resistance and so far a rejection off that area. Uh, we did close below the 21 yesterday, uh, not below the 10 simple, but that's okay. Uh, four hour, not giving us too much. We did lose the 200 exponential, however. Uh, four hour stokes coming down. What about the daily? Daily stokes are very indecisive. Oh my God. <laughs> it's actually, I mean, it's like literally, I guess technically it's down right now. Uh, I wouldn't consider that down though. But uh, yeah, really splitting hairs with that one. Again, you know, th this this 32 cent area is your resistance. If it does take it out to the upside, I would be looking for a very fast move to uh, 30. Uh, really, I mean, 33 and a half is your next resistance. But my personal opinion is 34 and a half cent. 34 and a half cent is a critical area, though, for Mr. Ripple's nipples. If he gets above that area, I would be looking for something new to probably occur alongside a very quick move to about 40 cent. And uh, that would that would start to change around the picture for Mr. Ripple's nipples. Of course, though, major support at a uh, twenty-eight and a half cent. As long as you're above there, okay, you can maybe make a maybe, uh, make an excuse for it. Um, but still, in the overall context of a descending triangle, uh, what's about Monero Cash? What's Monero Cash doing? Um, looking a little bit more healthy than most of the other ones, but still kind of struggling around this area in the overall context of a nice consolidation, which. <sighs> I don't really have a strong opinion on this consolidation. It's more constructive than the other ones, I would say, but also still has the also still has the correct uh, ca uh, characteristics of cor of corrective nature. So I, I can, you know, when everything else is kind of looking down, I'd say this guy's probably going to be down as well. But uh, still resting on support right here, so not bad. Fifty and a half dollars. If it does break fifty and a half dollars to the downside, I would be looking for a move down to about forty eight seventy five ish. By the same side to the uh, sorry, by the same token to the upside, I'd be looking for 54 and a third um, to essentially be demonstrative of a, of an actual breakout to the upside. If that were to happen, we would be looking for a move over to this area around 64 and a third. Uh, what else we got? We got a Stellar Cash over here. Stellar Cash having a nice move last night. Hey, not bad. Actually, Stellar Cash the only one uh, having a nice move like this. Funnily enough, uh, funnily, everyone hates that I say funnily enough all the time. Man, it's just an easy way to it's just an easy way to express myself. That's all. Uh, you do see the 50 exponential crawl on its way down, uh, getting all the way around to uh, this nine, little little bit above nine cent region. It seems to be where the resistance uh, area is, forming this overall falling channel, which typically a bullish three resolve pattern. However, just like with any pattern, I need to see this area broken, and that's again a little bit above nine cents for it to be broken. Uh, we'll have resistance right here at nine and a half cent, but uh, overall, if if, the, if that area does get some momentum above it, uh, just below eleven cents, where I'd actually be looking for. Again, uh, Stellar actually having a decent reaction. Uh, daily Stokes uh, crossing the upside, not bad, good. Uh, daily RSI, mm, wouldn't say that that's good signature. Again, this is your resistance right here. As long as you're below there, just consolidating. And this is technically an ascending broadening wedge, which is a bearishly resolved pattern. So uh, I, I would be hesitant on this one. This one's been very disappointing uh, recently. Uh, let's go check out, um, I'm gonna put on BNB. Let's go check out, an, check out another top shit coin. Uh, this one actually completely doing its own thing. I'm gonna add it to my list so I can actually look at it a lot more uh, frequently. Um, and finally, find it, finding our resistance right around this area. Uh, as we spoke about last night, having his, first, having his first nice pullback. And I do believe that this one has further down to go. Uh, actually, it's it's almost already at the 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 major uh, support that I was looking for at thirteen dollars and eighty seven cents. Obviously, this is going to be our resistance now at fourteen dollars and uh, seventy two and a half cents. But uh, thirteen dollars and ninety cents is very important. If thirteen dollars and uh, ninety cents breaks, I'd be looking for a move all the way down to about uh, twelve eighty, twelve ninety, somewhere right around here. Where it look look about right to me. So uh, yeah, this one went straight up parabolic. I know that it's you know it's kind of due to to, uh, to ICOs and whatnot, but remember remember Mr. Buterall in uh, 2017. You know the ICO craze can go on for a very long time, which is why you know I don't really you, you don't really hear me speak too often about something like this, just because I don't have strong opinions on 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 things like this as far as um, 
you know, as, as far as direction and opinion, because it is going to be a lot more fundamentally driven than most things, to be fair. It is going to be a lot more fundamentally driven. Um, but with the major levels, we can come up with those, and they, they are pretty damn clear. As long as this thing is, is overall above $11.67, you know, I'd, I would interpret it overall as good. But uh, this would be the big buy if it came all the way back down here. I'm curious what our what our oscillators say. We got four-hour stokes turning down around as well. We got 12-hour stokes uh, hinting at a cross down. Looks like they do want to cross down. Daily stokes crossing down as well in the more critical zone. So yeah, pretty pretty phenomenal rally. But I think that this this is that uh, I'm pretty sure that that was the uh, that was the top of the rally. We're gonna go consolidate lower before trying to get higher. And really, my personal opinion is that we get all the way down to about at the very least $12.90. Um, if we got all the way down to eleven dollars and uh, six six cents, that would not it would not really destroy the structure either. So either one of those, I'd try to trade on. Uh, you do have the daily little golden cross, good. You know, a lot more. Uh, overall, the picture is is a little bit more rosy than other things. Um, okay, so let's go back on to Mr. Bitcoin. I did forget to go over the underlying mark dynamics. Let's go over to the. Shorts and longs, we got shorts right over here at uh, just below 24,000. We got longs, which have been adding in the last day, now above 19 and a quarter. Or sorry, uh, shorts shorts above 19 and a quarter. Let's actually go look at it represented on the charts. Uh, longs, again, basically remaining flat. No one's really adding. No one's really taking off right now. But longs are in the area where actually major pumps have emerged from in the past, which is interesting. However, it's more about the ratio between the two. It's more about the ratio between the two. And when I look at the shorts right now, I do put on my drawing tools, you can see that we each and every time that we've gotten into this red box territory, that is where major dumps have emerged from. Now, we've stayed in this area for about two weeks now, and we have done that in the past as well and still had a major dump. But if we were to break 39.30 um, to the upside on Bitcoin, we're going to have something new going on. We're going to have something new going on uh, as, far, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you can see that people are getting interested once again in shorting. Um, I'm curious what the rates were. Not point out one three. That's nothing. Not point out one four. That's also nothing. Um, so again, we still do have that nice imbalance between the between the longs and the shorts, but it is starting to close a gap now. So if the bears are going to attack, I would imagine that it'd very likely be from this area. Again, going into confluence with all the things that we spoke about at the beginning of the stream: the monthly, the two week, the daily, the four day. And whatever else that we said, also on CMEs, also on GBTC. Um, so again, I would be looking for this to actually take over uh, relatively soon if this is going to be the play. This this is what I'd be looking for, especially with the last sort of uh, rejection that we just saw on the four hour right here. Um, you know, even with that rejection, we ended above all major moving averages on the four-hour dollar time frame. I don't want to make this sound like this is not you know not up for debate. It certainly is. It 100% is. Um, but lower time frames do. Hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll just leave it at that. Um, anyways, uh, let's go check out the crypto fear and greed index. We're ticking out of fifty four yesterday. Yesterday we were actually, that's strange. Yesterday we were higher. That's very strange. After today's move, we actually went lower. Uh, so yesterday we were technically a little bit greedy. Uh, today we're neutral. Um, but again, going over here and let me make sure that you can see all this. Okay, beautiful. Yes, you can. Uh, you know, looking at something like this, each and every time that this thing has spiked up above 50, that has called major dumps for the last year. Major fucking dumps. Again, this was your double top at 12,000 in February of last year. This was your top at 10,000 in May last year. This was your top at 8,400 in August last year. This was your breakage of 6,000 in November last year. And then once again, we've actually even gotten more greedy than most of those times, save for one. And Bitcoin is still right around this range right around this range. So again, this area of absolute importance, if we break back above it, I do not, I do not think that we're going to see that thing. Um, I think that we're going to see, we're going to see a new trend of trend emerge as far as the medium time frames go. Again, this is why I want to remain agnostic and be neutral with price action. Of course, until the trend is actually confirmed changed, you know, I'm still going to be looking at this area. I, I mean, like I said, I took a, I took a sell right here at, at about 39. Uh, let me actually check my other screen. Um, 39.85. So again, I'm going to be shorting this area until told otherwise. But uh, when, if and when it changes, the next skill is going to be is going to be being quick to to switch around my own uh, my own trading um, uh, 
uh, what's it called my own trading strategies very, very fast. Anyways, uh, let's get back on over here and I'm going to wrap this talk up with the three most important things to be aware of. As, as long as Bitcoin has not changed the super macro timeframes, as long as Bitcoin has not done these things, the overall trend has not changed. So when I talk about what I talked about throughout this whole video was all about the medium time frame, uh, medium time frames. Right now, I'll talk about the macro time frames. So it's very simple right now. If you're a long-term uh, long investor, long-term trader, uh, all I'd be paying attention to right now is the purple 200 exponential on the weekly and the purple, two, uh, sorry, and the pink 200 simple, uh, uh, 200 simple moving average on the weekly. Whichever one breaks first, that's going to be your, you know, if you're a longer term person, that, that's going to be, that'd be my next move. If we break the 200 simple to the downside, I would be looking for a move all the way into the, you know, into the mid 2000s. If we break the 200 exponential to the upside, that's when I would start to see, you know, a, a move into the, into the mid 4000s probably. For now, though, you can see that we are comfortably we're comfortably sandwiched right between all these guys. Uh, but using the ten simple as support right now, that would be interpreted as a good thing, no doubt about that. No doubt about that. But again, um, need to see price action confirm outside of this area. I need to see both an open and close above the weekly 200 exponential to start to change my opinions on the initial macro uh, perspective. However, that is not enough to get it done. The next, the next thing that I'm about to say is, is significantly more important. If Bitcoin could both, if Bitcoin could even just close above the monthly 21 exponential, which is all the way at 5200, I'd immediately become bullish. That would be good enough for me. Is that the most traditional way of doing it? No, but it would be good enough for me. Again, the last time that Bitcoin got back above the 21, it was it was a perfect entry as far as I'm concerned for an overall upwards market. Um, and that's, you know, something that I used to use in traditional markets to judge if someone was generally bullish, generally bearish. Uh, and again, that's coming in around 5,200. The third and final and most important piece, however, like I said, you're probably going to know beforehand, is uh, if Bitcoin can get back above the 6,000 area that it spent so long going sideways upon. If it broke if it broke back above there, I'd have zero reason to be bearish from a technical analysis, uh, analysis standpoint. So again, that's going to do it for this uh, morning's uh, video. Again, to, to wrap up the very low time frames, like the super low time frames, uh, looks to me like we are playing between 38.50 and 39. We could, we could say 3,900 essentially. <sighs> Whichever one breaks first, that's going to be the nice uh, small small term direction. However, I mean, if it breaks up to the upside, as I said, that's that's a medium time frame change. Uh, probably going to work our way into the into the low 4,000s. By the same token, if we do break below 38.50, I would be looking for a move down to the low side of this range. I wouldn't necessarily get bearish off that just yet. I would only get bearish from a medium time frame perspective if we broke about 38. Uh, sorry, 37. 80, 37, 90, basically where the daily 21 is. That's going to do it for this morning, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you as always. I'll be back on um, later with some more live stream action. Looking forward to seeing you guys there. If not, I want to wish you well on this beautiful, it's a very nice and sunny uh, Thursday, by the way, or sorry, Friday. <laughs> uh, happy Friday and uh, take care.